What's going on guys, Zach RC here and welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode number 19 today of the F1 2021 Driver Career Series, driving for Alpine, we're here for round number 7 of the championship, the Austrian Grand Prix. Before we get into this one guys, I want to say as always, thank you so much for the support on this series so far. I'm enjoying making them, I hope you're enjoying watching them. If you are new around here, then make sure to subscribe before you start watching this one and watch the, watch the last one, catch up on the playlist which will be up in the top right if you haven't seen it already, if you haven't seen these ones before. So without further ado, we're going to jump right in to the race weekend and get started with practice. Alright, so here we are then in the workstation as usual, getting ready for the start of practice one. I'm going to do it in quick practice as always. I do like Austria as a track, although I feel like I said with all, with all these tracks, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Regardless, first we're going to check a look at the emails. First an email from Ethan just for the weekend preview as always. We're currently around 14th in the Drivers' Championship with Alpine 6 in the Constructors. And we had, we, had, we had an aerodynamics upgrade that failed at the end of the last episode. So our main goal is there. We're trying to fix that. I've got the weather forecast from Jeff. It's going to be all dry, which is good because after the early stint of the season, we had just wet races. I'm getting annoyed with seeing them. We've got our rivalry still going on for Lance Stroll. We've got two more races left in this thing. We're currently still three points behind him. So our aim here should be able to try and turn be trying to turn some of those points back today so of course we've got we got the aerodynamics upgrade that we've got to we've got to redo for the next for just as quick as we can hopefully today we'll get in the practice we'll get the resource points we need to do that so we're going to jump right into quick practice number one start with race strategy as always get things underway our first task we, we were kind of stiff for options here on time we went for this 13 minute 10 one 70 percent chance of success and we've taken it so it's a decent start to the session Bit easier now, 7 minutes, 70% chance for a durability discount. We've taken it and there we go. But that's what we really have time for in this session. So we're going to move over to this 8 minute 31 here on, what's it, qualifying pace. I think it's qualifying pace. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, we've got two from one and one of the other. So not too bad at all to start the first practice session or to end it. Second practice session underway here. We're going to get, going to get continue on with, uh, with race strategy. See if we can get one more thing from it. So we're going to go for this 11 minute 51 here. And the program's failed, so I think we're going to give up on that front. So... We can't really get much more out of it. Go back to the qualifying pace here. Six minutes, seven percent chance success. With 100 resource points to our names. Another seven minute one for a powertrain discount, and we've got that too. So that's now three. So we could try and go for this 33 minute 31, but I'm going to check, make sure there's nothing else we can do. Go for this 25 percent chance. Well, I doubt we'll get it. And yep, we don't get it. We don't get it in the slider. So there we go. Took three on the qualifying pace front. So now I'm going to jump on to the last practice session of the race weekend getting through these thick and fast so we can get towards the race the last one we have to do is ERS management so hopefully we succeed here 7 minutes and 40 seconds our first task 100% chance of success that's one down hopefully four to go 7 minutes and 10 seconds here 70% chance of success that's the second one for us I'm going to try for this chassis discount here can we get this one 70% chances we've made it but that's all we can really get out of it if we can have, we can have another look around see if there's anything more we can do the 25% one's back for qualifying pace so we'll give it one last shot see if we can make it this time nope we can't Alright, so not too bad a practice session. Two on race strategy and three on qualifying pace and ERS management as well. So not too bad a session to be entirely honest. That's 800 resource points going in the bank between me and Fernando. So that puts us up to 1,839. So not too bad at all. And of course we've got some development boosts that have been applied. One for, durability, one for reliability, one for the powertrain and one for the chassis. The chassis one's been building up for a long time. It's a 29% discount now. So we, de we definitely have to apply that at some point. And our driver acclaim is still in level 6, but it's gone up just a little bit. So, as usual, we skip ahead of qualifying, because I, I like to keep where I start the secret until the race gets going. I say a secret, but I don't, I don't really mean that to be entirely honest. Alright, so we're going to have a look around one more time here, just before we get going for this race. Like I say, I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm thinking it'll be a blast. We're, off, we're now four points behind Strolls. So we have got work to do in, in this one. We want to be because we fell behind in qualifying. But without further ado, we're going to jump right into the race. And hopefully, it'll be a really good one. Welcome to the beautiful Styrian Mountains for another chapter in the story of the Austrian Grand Prix. It's one of the shortest laps on the calendar today then with seven rights and just three lefts, making up the ten corners of this high-speed circuit. Turn two is barely a corner at all. They'll be flat out through there, a left-hand kink into the uphill braking zone of turn three. Turns one, three, and four are all potential opportunities to overtake. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? But from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle. 
and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, and Sainz, Ricardo, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, and Sebastian Vettel, Stroll, Cohen, Yuki Tsunoda, and Raikkonen. Norris, they've taken a grid penalty. Giovinazzi, George Russell, and Mick Schumacher. Latifi and Nikita Mazepin. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. All right then guys, here we are now on the grid for the start of the Austrian Grand Prix. We qualified in P13, but we gained a place thanks to Lando Norris's engine penalty or whatever he took. He took a grip penalty, that's for sure, I don't actually know what it was for. Regardless, we'll have a look at the strategy today, as always. We're going to make some alterations to the strategy today. Uh, 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 I originally was going to do the original softs to mediums, but I decided to make the change and go from mediums to softs, and hopefully that'll pay off because we'll have the tyre advantage come the end of the race, and it's not too much time we're losing in the way of just the race time compared to the original strategy. So we're going to, we're going to bust the fuel down a little bit, 18 and a half laps, that should last us to the end. But here we, regardless, now here we go. Five red lights now for the Austrian Grand Prix, round seven of the season for episode 19 of the driver career. It's underway. It didn't take long for the lights to go out. We've had a bit of a poor start here compared to everyone else around us. Sonoda's on the left hand side, as is Raikkonen. They've managed to find a way past. We're going to dive into turn one here. We're trying to take things. We've cut the corner in order to just avoid things. I'm not surprised there's no warning there. Regardless, pushing away, we've managed to find a way past Alonso and us up into P9. So our next target immediately is Pierre Gasly and the Alpha Tower in front of us. Turn three to provide the best opportunity to go for these moves, and then we go to the inside. We're trying to get through rest of signs on the car as well. There's a bit of contact there. Oh, I haven't really drove, drove into them like I have before in the past with these guys, but regardless, we're, we're falling behind them, so don't really get much out of it. And Gansley's trying to come back at us, so we've got to be careful. Him going down to turn four, there he is on the right. We're going three abreast into the right hander. Then no contact, surprisingly, we managed to get away with that. And so we're up into P7 now, so we've succeeded there. Signs has dropped back. I think he's actually almost out of the points. Gansley's on our inside. We're going to Squeeze him, give him no room, he falls back, so we've got a piece of, he's lost his momentum. And we've now got to try and chase down Daniel Ricciardo. I doubt we'll be able to, because of the fact we're on medium tyres, he's on softs, and we're on the 7th, 8th fastest car on the grid. So it does get difficult at that point. So, coming to the last couple of corners here, towards the end of lap number 1. Gasly's still right there behind us, so we have to be very careful with him as Verstappen sets the fast lap of the race and gets this thing underway. 17 more laps left to go, and Gasly's still right behind us there, so he's still going to be on a consistent challenge. For, the, for potentially the rest of the race, but you know, right now, he hasn't got DRS yet, we won't have DRS until the next lap, but he's still close to have a run us here, on the right hand side, going up towards turn number 3, of course, we're still battling with a worn MG UK here, and we're going to have to replace that for the next race, we did replace a few parts at the end of the last episode, just to keep things nice and fresh with Gasly, we've gone round the outside of him, we're holding on to P7, so we're okay for the time being, but here comes Gasly again now, he's got the DRS, as he comes back down this same straight, Going back up towards turn number three, Gasly on the right hand side once again. We managed to block him off the first time, and he comes out on the inside. We're, we're going the long way around here. We should be able to get the edge. There we go around the outside. There might have been a bit of contact there, but on, on that camera angle, I obviously can't tell because of how close it was. Gasly still got the DRS on us now, coming down this next straight. This is the advantage of running behind the car here. You've got three DRS zones all coming one after the other, but for the rest of the lap, which is still relatively short, you don't have anything. Regardless, he's still able to keep pace with us, so he's still going to be an impending threat throughout the rest of the race. Moving on to lap number four now, Gans has managed to find his way through, but we have the RS on him now. So we're going to pull to the right hand side, try and go for this move. Sonoda's also there behind us, so we have to be careful of him, but he's not close enough to go for a move. We're on the inside of Gasly, and that is P that's P7 secure right here on lap number four. But Gasly is still chasing us here in the Alpha Tari. This one could get dicey going through this last sector. We've got a bit wide there, and Gasly could take advantage. We had to break in order to actually make the corner. We've made a bit of contact there, we threw the hand up. We're still on the outside, allowing Gasly to squeeze through. We've banged tyres there, so we're still side by side with the Frenchman. And thinks the notice if we want to try and have a go. We've blocked him off on the left hand side, he's going to try it on the right, going inside into the penultimate corner on the lap. We had to slow up to actually avoid hitting Gasly or Sonoda. We've managed to squeeze him out though, so we had to go around the outside, but it's paid off. So we're still running right behind Gasly here, and we've still got a decent chance to try and get him back. 
in one of these three DRS zones. We couldn't get him in the first one, but still kind of close to him. So we've still, we've still got work to do here. We are just under half a second behind at this point. If we, get, if we get a better exit off of turn three, I reckon we can really get him. But going up through towards that third corner on the DRS, we're still close. Can we try and dive to the inside? No, we're not going to try it. Be stupid. We basically pushed him to the corner there, a bit aggressive. But regardless, we've got the DRS one more time, so we can potentially try and go for a dive if we can. But now nah, he's too far away to make a difference. Moving on to lap, lap number seven, we're going ahead a few laps, and we're still running just behind Gasly with Sonoda for company behind us. It's getting closer Caution. and closer, and we've got a yellow flag in front of us, and that looks to be one of the McLarens. That's Daniel Ricciardo, because Norris is already Ricardo. behind us down at 15th, and yep, there it is. Ricciardo out the session, we've got a bit wide there. You see him go past on the right there. Unfortunately for Ricciardo, he hasn't the best start to the season, similar to real life, the rest, but clear. hopefully he'll Green flag. bounce back from that retirement. Regardless, pushing on now to where, towards the end of lap number eight, we're still chasing Pierre Gasly, but this is where he's going to call it quits. Head off the road and go into the pit lane for his first and what should be his only stop of the Grand Prix. And a couple of other cars are, put, are pitting now, so that should put us further up in the order as, well, as Fernando comes into the pits now on lap eight. Of course, we're not pitting until lap ten, and then we'll run, we'll run ten laps on these mediums and we'll run another eight on the soft tyres. Hopefully, we should be all right on that front. I don't think Sonoda's finished yet though, as we keep watching behind us, he's, he's definitely close on us with that DRS. When he try and make a move, he goes to the left hand side, we have to give him the space. Here we go, going wheel to wheel with our old rival from Formula 2. There we go up the inside and we should have the place secure. And we're going to pull away here and that should be able to, that should be able to keep him up behind us for the time being. As they're down this next rate, of course we did win in Austria, that was our first win in Formula 2. Very exciting times, so obviously times have changed now. I'm in the Alpine, he's in the Alfa Tauri and it's definitely different for us, we're just battling it towards the back of the pack now. Lap, Regardless, on to lap 10 now, and enough people now. pitting for us to actually manage to take the lead in this Austrian Grand Prix. So, that, so I'm going to enjoy this moment back. also, but on the full race update, just have Jeff telling me that we're P1. But unfortunately, all, all good things must come to an end, and we still do have to pit in order to finish the race. So we're coming in now to our, into our pit box for our first and only pit stop of the day. We're changing on to these soft tyres. And those are around the end of the race. Vettel's coming in right behind us in Aston Martin, so it's going to be very close here. Go, go, Will we go. manage to beat him out? No, we've had to wait. We've had to also go, have to wait for Giovinazzi to go past as well. So a poor stop from us on our end. That's three seconds. I can only assume Vettel was faster, and that's the reason he's managed to get out first. So that is unfortunate. We are still on the soft tires. We've fallen out of the points now. We're down to P13, so it means we've still got, still got serious work to do here late on in this Austrian Grand Prix. We've got seven more laps, or seven and bit laps to go in order to get back up into the points. We, and I doubt we are to reach P7 again, but I reckon a points finish should definitely be on the cards here. We've got the DRS and Sebastian Vettel going down into turn three, up into turn three. Up the hill we come, diving to the inside. There we go, on the inside. And we, we've taken all the room we need, and that is P12 secure. So we continue to push on now. So we've got the DRS on stroll, but we won't be able to have a go at him Great until the next lap. So he's still quite way in front of us. Pushing on now to that next lap. We've got the DRS on stroll, still as how we do with Vettel. We're going to try and go with the Aston Martins. Fancy Vettel on the last lap, now we fancy Lance Stroll, our, our rival on this particular lap. There we go to the inside, and that is us ahead of our rival, as Snow locks up in front of us. And we've got Fernando Alonso next up on the radar, so he's our next target. I hate to, ha I hate to kick him out the points like this, but uh, things just have to be done. Game's the game, so. Stroll's still there behind us, not close enough to try and go for a move, or isn't going for a move. Pushing on towards the end of lap number 13 now, we've got just five laps to go in this Grand Prix. We're right on the back of Alonso, and pulled to the right hand side, open up the DRS, and that should be all we need to get past him going into turn one. He backs out of it going into that first corner. We have the edge on the inside. Alonso falls away and that and that puts us up into the points again. So we're on course for a decent for a decent points finish here. As next we have to tackle Yuki Sonoda once again. But this time we're the car behind him chasing him. Here we go dive into the inside. Can we make it in? There's no contact. We had to go over the curve a bit. We managed to make our way through though as Alonso falls down to P12 behind us. We've got the DRS Sonoda is still right there though. We run side by side down this next straight. This is great racing. Heading down into the right hander, we should have the edge on the inside. There we go, Sonoda backs out of it, and that should be us holding on to the spot nice and easy. So now we've only got four more laps left to go, and we're running in P9 at the points finish. But on lap 17, coming towards the start of the last lap, I did notice that we have a bit of a problem with the fuel. We fueled it, only fueled the car to go half a lap longer than the, than the race actually was, so just 18 laps. And we are currently in the red, so I get the feeling that eventually that at some point in the last lap we will go into low fuel mode I don't know where it's going to be because I can't exactly gauge where on the track it's going to be regardless now we're on the last lap we've got, we've got half a second gap to Yuki Tsunoda but I feel like these soft tyres have run their course by this point Tsunoda is closing on us with the DRS we have literally no help and we, and we, only, and we only have to wait for the fuel to run out sorry Tsunoda's on the inside going in, up into turn 3 and we have the edge and there we go around the outside and that should be us we need, we need that should be us secure for the time being but we need to secure 
higher, higher, oh, it's a bigger gap at this point, just so he can keep his snow behind us. He's going for it again, but he's not close enough. He was not close enough to go for a move, there was just, he just ran out straight at that point. Regardless, we're still in the red here. I'm not doing anything to try and run out of fuel, because at this point, I'm just thinking, if we run out, we run out. I reckon we can still keep them behind us. Perez crosses the line to win the Austrian Grand Prix, take his another victory in his campaign this season. Regardless, we're still pushing on here to try and take try and take P9 late on. We have, we have hit low fuel modes. Here we go then. Snow is not close enough though to try and go for a move. Why we make this last corner okay, we should be alright. Got a warning there for exceeding track limits, but I couldn't really care less. Over the line we come to take P9. Another points finish on the board for us here at Alpine. And I'm right, very pleased over. with that. We take care of the car suffered a minor in. setback with the pit stops. We managed to fight back and win the race. Not win the race, what I'm saying. We managed to take a points finish, which does feel like a victory. But the victory does go to this man, Sergio Perez for Red Bull. Once again, another victory to keep, keep him close to Verstappen in the Drivers' Championship. And hopefully pull him away from Hamilton as well. In, on an interesting Red Bull's case. So Perez, your winner from Verstappen. And then Valtteri Bottas. It definitely wasn't Lewis's weekend. So there it goes, the celebrations begin. So without further ado, we'll have a look now at the final results of this Austrian Grand Prix. Sergio Perez wins the race from Verstappen, Bottas, Hamilton and Leclerc. Then it's Gasly who finished sixth in the end. He managed to beat Sainz. Norris eighth, us in ninth and Yuki Tsunoda in tenth. So all in all, not too bad a weekend. We, could, we did miss out on driver of the day in the end because Lando got it. Regardless, so Verstappen still leads the Drivers' Championship by just four points to Perez. With Lewis 24 points back from the leader. And we're now up into P13 in the Drivers' Championship, having got a few extra points to overtake Stroll. And those points have got us draw a little bit clearer of Aston Martin now by just three points. But those three points could be crucial come the end of the season. So I'm really pleased with our performance today. Of course, I would love the double points finished, but unfortunately, that's the way it is in Formula 1 sometimes. Red Bull still continues to extend their lead at the top of the Constructors' Championship, meanwhile. So looking at our rivalry, we've got, we got four points to Lance's two here. So some progress has been made, we're still two points behind with just one race. I know it says two races left, but that's because the race weekend hasn't technically finished yet. But now it has. So Silverstone's our last race against Stroll in the rivalry. We need to get some extra points against him in order to win that rivalry and get the acclaim. So regardless, the main thing here is that we, ha we get that aerodynamics upgrade fixed and get that going for our... For our, which is our next race weekend if we can. So we're going to pay for that nice and easy. But that's a decent amount of our resource points gone. So we'll go for this durability upgrade. And I reckon we could potentially go for that chassis up upgrade if we wanted to. We'll have to see how many resource points we have come the um, come we, when we advance the time here. So we're going to do that. With our other chassis upgrades come through for the plank. And we've got our weekly, weekly, we, I can't speak, weekly resources coming in for the next transition. race weekend. Or just do this week. The uh, so the new weekend. parts completely that issue like Ethan said. Uh, so we do have enough now to go for that chassis upgrade because of the, all the discounts we've had. So there we go, we've bought that. So I'm very pleased with how this episode's, episode's gone. We've got four upgrades coming in. We have fallen behind Alfa Romeo, but once all these upgrades are done, we should be back ahead of them. But regardless, you guys, that is the end of this video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button as well. And I hope you join us for the next episode when we go to Silverstone, our home Grand Prix, the British Grand Prix. I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully we can take another point to finish there and beat Stroll on the rivalry. But until then, you guys, I shall see you next time. Have a good day and goodbye.